Hello everyone, in this video I'm going to talk about mobile woofer cages. But to understand mobile woofer cages, we will have to understand stationary woofer cages first. So therefore here is a design for a stationary woofer cage. Let's quickly look what it, um, how it works. So it consists of, of six parts. First of all we have a middle head target, in this case the villager. It's called the middle head target because the middle head of the river is targeting this entity. And if he could see it, he would shoot it, but he doesn't shoot it because he can't see it. He can't see it because there's a block between the middle head target and the river. And the middle head target is always the target closest to the river when the river is summoned. So we summoned him over here somewhere, and since this river villager was the closest entity to the river. The river picked this villager as his middle head target. And the river generally tries to fly roughly six blocks above the middle head target, as we can see here. So, but if the river wouldn't see any entities at all, we would have a problem, because if the river doesn't shoot any skulls at any entity, after one period of time we will he will start shooting blue river skulls in completely random direction and they can destroy absolutely anything, as you can see here. And yeah. So for this reason we have another entity, the side head target. And the side head target can be any entity this the middle head can see. Because if the middle head can see this target, the side heads will shoot at it. But the middle head doesn't shoot at it because the middle head is tar targeting the villager down there. And it doesn't matter whether the side heads can see the side head target. All that matters is whether the middle head can see the side head, uh, the side head target. As we can see here, the side heads clearly can't see the iron golem, but they are still shooting at him because the middle head can see the iron golem. But if the middle head didn't see, iron golem, but the side has sit, the side has won't shoot. And so basically for a stable river cage what you need first a middle head target, secondly a river, third a side head target, and then you need a block that um, makes the middle head not see the middle head target, so the middle head isn't allowed to see his target, and the side heads aren't allowed to see the side head target either, but the middle head of the river must be able to see the side head target. Okay, and when last we have a damaging system, this, in this case this is just a dispenser of snow. Yeah, sorry for that quick break. Okay, so we have a damaging system down here, and the reason we want to damage the river is that if we damage the river, he breaks blocks. So, yeah, and that's basically all we need to know about stationary river cages. So, let's now start looking at how to move these things. Okay, so now we want to move with river cage. To move with river cage, all we need to do is move each individual part. So, let's just start with the middle target, the villager. Can we move the villager? Well, let's just try it. As you can see, the villager glitches through the floor if the floor is moving. One solution to this problem is to use zeotic pulses, because if you have zeotic pulses, the block will be instantly teleported, and the villager will have no time to glitch through the floor, because the floor, at least one block of the floor, will be teleported instantly. And another solution to the problem is to move to use an entity wider than one block, because they, um, they don't glitch for a floor, they can get launched away, but they, it's at least a different problem, put, let's put it right away. Yeah, okay. So we can move the middle head targets. Okay, next, can we move the block between the middle head target River. And there's actually a problem there, because if we move the block, it will become block 36 for a while, and 
the river can see through block 36. So you can see the river is shooting down and you can even shoot the villager. And that's not good, because if the villager dies, our entire river cage will be ruined. So one solution to a problem is to again use theoretic pulses, because if we just teleport the block, he will never be block 36 and therefore the river will never be able to see through the block. And another solution to yeah, like that. And another solution to the problem is not to have one block between the villager and the river, but to have two blocks. Then you can move one block at a time and when there's always a block between the river and the villager and when everything's okay. So we can move the block between the villager and the river and I'll quickly summon the river and then I'll be back. Okay, next can we move the side target? Well the side target is just any entity, it doesn't have to be an item call. So moving the side target is just as difficult as moving the main target. So yes we can move it ever either with theoretic pulses or we ju just use an entity wider than one block like for example an iron go. So yeah, we can move that. Now can we move the, the wall between the river and the sighted target? This is actually one of the most difficult parts because while the while we move the wall the mold the wall is block 36 and block 36 has a blast resistance of zero so the black river is called could destroy the wall if we were to move it so if I were to just push it with a normal piston while while moving it the river could shoot at it and destroy the iron blocks but if the iron blocks are stationary he can't destroy it because the Black Wolf Gold have a very low explosion power. So we need to find a way to move this wall without ever having a block 36 at the point we were shooting at. So one solution would be again to use theoretic pulses, but you would have to use a lot of pistons. And it would be really, really complicated. So this is actually one of the uh, difficult things about the move while with a cage and I think the best way to present you the solutions is to show you working mobile river cages and how they how they um, compensated this issue, how they solved this issue. Yeah. So let's just go to another world and I'll meet you over there. Okay, here is an example of a mobile river cage. The way it moves the wall between the river and the sighted target is not by moving the wall directly, but by taking the last part and just moving the last part to the front and then taking again the last part. And if you look at the wall, the wall isn't moving. It seems like the wall is just staying there. So the side of the wall the river is shooting at isn't converted to block 36 therefore the black river skulls can't break it so that's one solution you can break the wall and I just want to quickly go over this mobile river cage and show you how everything else is implemented so down here we have the middle head target the middle head target is wider than one block so it doesn't glitch through the floor and the blocks between the middle head target and the river aren't moved at once but there's first we move this part and when we move the part above so there's always a block between the river and the middle head target so the river can't see the middle head target and the side head target is also wider than one block so everything we have said before is implemented here and also here we have this mechanism to push the river himself we can simply push him, there's really no actually, actual difficulty of pushing with him. So yeah, so we've already reached a point where we can 
make a complete removable with a cages. cage. And now we will start looking at the damaging systems because this movable with a cage has no damaging system. Okay, so here we have a system to damage with river that consists out of movable parts only. What we are doing is that we are suffocating the river in sand. And we are using sand because if the river is suffocating for more than two game ticks, he will also start shooting blue river gold. And we don't want that. So we, we are using sand because the sand suffocates the river and then the sand instantly falls down, leaving him no time to shoot blue river skulls. So by using theoretic pulses to purchase sand into the head of the river, we can make a damaging system, cause the river to break blocks for us without using any immovable parts like dispensers. And I can also recommend using something like this for stationary river cages, because this doesn't require any extra resources. Like for example dispensers, you have to, to need a constant flow of arrows into a dispenser. Um, but this also has a downside, and that is if this chunk becomes a non-entity processing chunk while the sand is in mid-air, um, this river cage can break. Uh, the river will not escape, but the damaging system might break. And um, something you need to take, you need to be careful with if you are using this kind of damaging system is that the explosion of the river skulls um, should not redirect the falling sand because the falling sand could theoretically be redirected if there are uh, explosions near the falling sand. So that's something you need to be careful with. And I will now show you a mobile river cage which implements this damaging system. Okay, here we are. And now we have a mobile river cage where we use gravel instead of sand. It's just any movable foam block. And we push the gravel into the head of the river. And when you get damaged, and when the graph falls down, and when you use the piston to pick the gravel up again. And right away we have a mobile river cage that can break blocks, even blocks of obsidian. And yeah. So, um, another interesting trick here is that um, the box where the river is eating, is destroying the blocks when damaged, is not equal to the hitbox. As you can see, the hitbox um, reaches up here, but the river only breaks blocks down here. The river hitbox reaches to this block, and but he's only breaking blocks down here. And that way we can move in even more easily, because and you can get this height if you just have a middle head target on a half slab and the river freely floating above him. That's just very practical. So yeah, and I will now get rid of the bounding boxes. So yeah, we use the same wall between the side head target and the river. And something that's also um, interesting is um, the middle head target isn't directly below the river in this design, and that's because I want the river to have a certain orientation. Because if I have, for example, the middle head target here, the side heads would be directly in the gravel, when the gravel is pushed into the river, and then the explosion might redirect the gravel. But um, it's hard to explain, but you you get what I mean when you're experimenting around with it. Maybe maybe you don't run into this issue at all. And yeah. So that's basically everything you need to know about this mobile river cage. And I think if you know how to build things with fly blocks, slime blocks, basic flying machines, you should now be able to build your own mobile river cages. Yeah, that's about it. And yeah, bye.